Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending May 24th. And yes, right up over there, those are Nerf darts, and I do have a crossbow that shoots them. Might demonstrate it someday. So the first article, this is uh, from phys.org, and two scientists back in 1934 from Imperial College in London named Wheeler and, let me get the names right here, Breit and Wheeler in 1934 theorized that you can take two photons and crash them together at the right speed and the right energy level and actually produce matter from photons. Now, it's taken this long to be able to get a, an experiment to be able to show that this could happen as far as a pure experiment. It has been done before and proven, but as an offshoot where a, um, in the experiment they had to actually introduce regular mass particles, uh, particles of, of quite large masses. So it was never done as a real pure experiment, and the scientists themselves didn't think it could be done as a pure experiment. Well, now I guess they do have a procedure using modern-day equipment that can be done, so they will actually crash two photons together at extremely high energies just in, just in case you're thinking that you could just take two flashlights and aim them at each other and and uh, yeah the photons will <clears throat> in a way kind of encounter each other but uh, even yeah even the highest uh, energy laser you could possibly buy you're not going to have this happen this has to happen at uh, huge and tremendous energies and uh, it gives details of the way the experiment's going to happen and I guess several labs are rushing to to be the first to actually do this as a pure experiment. But if you're into some heavy physics reading and some heavy physics theories, this is kind of cool how they will uh, finally do a pure experiment using photons only and prove this theory to be correct. And uh, next up, this is a cool gadget. In fact, I, um, this was uh, submitted by, the first one was submitted by uh, Jose Angel. And there's another one, too, that uh, I'm going to include along with it because they're both 360-degree cameras. And the first one's a Kickstarter project, and it's, um, I don't know how to describe it. It's kind of shaped like a weeble, fits in the palm of your hand. I'll put a picture up of it. And it produces 360-degree panorama-style video. It's already blasted way past its Kickstarter goal. Its goal was 150000 and right now it's at 489000 So um, it's pretty certain this thing is going to be uh, produced. And I guess estimated delivery is sometime in August of uh, this year, 2014. But yeah, a 360-degree high-quality camera. Not really sure if these, this thing is going to end up being a novelty, kind of like the 360-degree attachment on a bloggy camera. I had one of those bloggies that you had the uh, semi-hemisphere mirror attachment so you could do 360-degree. Uh, obviously, these cameras will be a little bit better quality even than that. The second camera is from Mashable. Uh, capture it's called capture 360 degree HD video with this tiny UFO style camera that's in the palm of your hand too very tiny like a hockey puck with a hole in the middle of it or maybe like a uh, squared off donut or something like that you would call it and uh, it does the same thing it takes really good high definition video in 360 degrees um, both of these cameras if you um, look at the article and as usual all the links will be down below both of these cameras have plenty of video demonstrating the quality and what they're able to do so, uh, yeah, just like your opinion on it, is it going to be another novelty like uh, the old bloggy with the 360 degree? Is it going to be a novelty similar to the, uh, remember when everybody was doing 3D and stereo capture on YouTube when they brought that out? And now that seems to come and go. I mean, there's still some of it being produced, but more like a novelty item. But anyway, these are two cameras, and people asked about the price, and it seems like from reading both articles in detail, they're both trying to aim. I don't know if this will happen, but they're probably both trying to aim towards that $399 price point. I think ever since um, GoPro has come up with that, you know, brand new $399 entry price level, I think everybody's been shooting for that as the mark. So that's my guess that uh, if and when these do come about, you're looking at about $399 for it. Uh, might be worth it if you want to experiment around. And certainly if you do and you make a test video, send it to me. I'd be uh, happy to promote it on the TDD website. Okay, this next one is for another regular contributor of mine, Sir S.A. Um, this is from, let me get the website here, Charged. Let's see, it's called ChargedDevs.com. Toyota makes it official. Battery EV, EVs stink. Fuel cells rule. They're not totally getting out of the battery business. Uh, Toyota is still going to make uh, electric fuel hybrids, but uh, they're ending the contract. They had been the contractor for Tesla supplying batteries to them for their electric vehicle, but Toyota just thinks the future is not in pure electric vehicles. 
And uh, I'll have to admit, about 10 years have gone by in development, and I really expected some major breakthroughs either in, uh, we need either a major breakthrough in engine, uh, in motor efficiency, or a major breakthrough in battery technology, or at least a medium breakthrough in both. Because until we can come up with around a 300 mile cruising range and a quick recharge time, like five minutes or less, um, people are going to want to be able to use their vehicle for more than just short trips. Um, so, yeah, if you want to use something for just more than short trips back and forth, um, they think the future for Toyota, they're going to go with fuel cells. And they have the uh, wherewithal and the money to invest. If they go with fuel cells, maybe you'll finally see fuel cells be practical because of the fact of uh, they've just never been mass produced in enough numbers. But if Toyota puts the bucks behind it and uh, the development, they're ones that could probably make it happen. And last up. This is from Gizmodo. NASA is letting citizens commandeer a long-lost satellite. I had talked about this satellite before. This was a satellite that was used for uh, observation of uh, Earth and uh, Sun effect. Uh, it's the IC3. Well, this group um, is going to take over. They're willing to take over, and NASA's actually signed the papers. So the IC3 reboot group is going to, that's what they're going to name themselves. Um, the official name is Skycorp. Space Ref, Space College Foundation, but yeah, NASA signed over the paperwork after they took this thing off of its original mission and took it after uh, two comets doing comet hunting. Um, NASA pretty much gave up on it and abandoned it, but it is still, as far as they know, functional. So once this group gets a hold of it, um, they've reached their goal, I guess, of, reach, of uh, raising enough money to actually put the stuff together, and they're rushing against time right now. They've got about two months to come up with software to replace the communications and a good satellite antenna to talk to this thing. And once that's accomplished, um, they're going to use this as a future um, and future missions to chase other comments and possibly to train people to run satellites in the future. So a good thing for some of the future scientists that run new satellites in the, under private control. So if you get a chance, check out this article from gizmodo.com. So that's about it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.